What's up? This is Tony. Hey, I'm Ryan. And we're from Iron Reagan. Mm -hmm. And you're watching Brutally Delicious. It's brutally Delicious. It's just what it says. Yeah, it's true. Brutally Delicious! Hey, welcome to Brutally Delicious. I'm Bruce Moore, and today we've got another great show on store for you. Keeping in line with that theme we created uh, back a few episodes ago, we're going to travel the globe again. This time we're going to find ourselves landing in Denmark, and we're going to speak to the Danish metal band Roarback. And if you stay tuned, we're going to see what they have cooked up for us today. It's been about a year since you guys released your EP, Face the Sun. Uh, you guys working on anything else at the moment? If so, when can we expect it? Yes, we are uh, working on new material in some way. Uh, we just uh, recorded um, our debut album, uh, full length album, 10 tracks of fucking brutal and rawness and steel. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> and um, it's being um, mixed and mastered right now. We are, uh, we're waiting, we're, uh, we are waiting for the product to, uh, <laughs> to come in our hands. What's your writing process like? You guys all write together? Or is it more the effort to one particular member of the band? Our writing process is basically uh, the two guitarists are writing some riffs into a prototype of a song. Uh, and they show it to Core and me and I. Uh, we add the bass and the drums. Um, and Dennis. He gives his uh, second-hand opinion, uh, ultimately, and adds the lyrics. That's how we do it. What's the heavy metal scene like over in Denmark? We don't hear too much about it over here. You guys receive a lot of support from the fans in the scene in general? The metal scene in Denmark is not the greatest, I could imagine. Uh, all the bands tend tends to play the same uh, genres of music. Uh, the same types of music and it's like they all follow the same pattern for the music they write and, and it's all sound the same, it's all sounds boring uh, Core-ish yeah, it's, it's only core, metalcore and deathcore and, right, and all techcore tech core and all that hardcore, that shit and it's our music is what I feel is totally the opposite What's the story behind the name of the band, Roarback? The name Rawback actually um, came out of nowhere. Um, we uh, we spent like a month um, going through 50 different names um, when we when we uh, tried to find a band name, and uh, I think we were all pretty surprised of how hard it was to uh, find a name that we all could agree uh, on calling the band, but. Um, we ended up with um, Rawback, um, I don't even remember who, who uh, came up with it, but um, we are very happy with Rawback and um, it's a great name. Do you have any touring plans in support of the record? And if so, do you have any plans to tour outside of Denmark? Well, we are, we are uh, working on uh, touring outside of Denmark after we release our first album. We, we do not know when that's gonna be, but it's, uh, our album is gonna come out later this year and hopefully it will be followed up by some uh, European tour dates. What would fans be surprised to find on your iPod? I have a little thing for uh, old school hip hop uh, and uh, <laughs> uh, Cypress Hill. I have some of their records and uh, a lot of Bob Dylan records. That's a little thing of mine also. Uh, I don't listen to that much music besides it's metal, but 
I uh, also have a little thing for Cypress Hill uh, and maybe like old school video game music like Doom and <laughs> Wolfenstein, <laughs> all that kind of uh, hardcore shit. I guess the fans would be pretty surprised uh, seeing my iPod, uh, noticing that I listen both to metal and uh, I have a thing for a band called Wildest Boy Alive and uh, James Maynard Keenan has a solo project called Pussifer and they are just awesome. Well, the music I have, first of all, I don't have an iPod. I think they're too fucking expensive. <laughs> Just an MBT3 uh, player because I don't like Mac products. But, well, I listen to the mainly music I listen to in, in, at the moment and for the last like year. It's mainly uh, symphonies, like uh, new newcomer composer, composers of symphony like Jeremy Soule and uh, mainly also new computer games and you know like uh, adventure games where they, they they use all these instruments like uh, violin and uh, you know uh, some paper trumpets trumpets and you know every kind of classical instrument I like uh, I also like to watch the uh, the old uh, classic like um, Sometimes uh, Mozart and and uh, Edward Krieg and, and you know uh, I, I like classical music but not all of it so that might be the more more strange things you can hear on my MP3 player player and also yeah some rock old rock. Um, I don't know how uh, how strange it is but. Um I do listen to a lot of uh, grunge music, like Alice in Chains, Alice, no, what's it called? Alice in Chains. Alice in Chains, uh, <laughs> and uh, Nirvana, um, Pearl Jam, like old school rock. Um, and sometimes I do enjoy uh, some Frank Sinatra while playing World of Warcraft. I, really, I, I, actually, <laughs> I like that. Yeah. What's next for Roarback? The next for Rawbag is is getting our first album out and uh, hopefully, like we said before, touring out of Denmark, some Euro European tours perhaps, and also uh, get some more concerts here in, in in Denmark after the release of our album. So yeah, that, that's the next for us. And um, ladies, yeah, yeah, for some and Pussies. drugs, yeah, <laughs> drugs and alcohol and a tour bus. What ingredients do you have here? <laughs> First, we have to talk about what the hell the dish is called. Well, it's called the uh, Viking stew. Uh, well, actually, I, I don't know if they have all these like, ingredients in the, the Viking Age. I don't know if they have ketchup. I don't think so, but but it's it's in there. They have pisca well, flow. <laughs> yeah, they have they have pisca flow and pisca flow is cream. And then, <coughs> well, we're gonna go through the, the ingredients right now. We need, uh, we need some pig meat, some pork, just, yeah. Not an Arab. <laughs> and uh, just have it in some small pieces, Something just like this. Uh, then you don't have to cut them out, but you can choose just to, to buy it. But mainly just get the, some pig, pig meat. And um, you're gonna need some... <laughs> Stop that. <laughs> We're gonna need some salt and pepper and curry and paprika, if it's pronounced correctly, oh. and um, some garlic and onions also, and some milk with about 1.5% fat. The, you don't want to have the milk uh, too fat-free because uh, it, it, it gets a more poor taste. So, uh, kind of a little fatty products. It's it's good. So. We are just gonna get started. All right, this is called a frying pan, and we're gonna use it to knock somebody out. Let's see if they're ready. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Well, the next step is frying the pork meat. Um, like I said before, make sure it is in small pieces. Uh, so it, if it isn't, cut it down. And then uh, we're gonna fry it and later when it's it's fried we're gonna put some onions and uh, garlic in there also so for how many times have you been uh, cooking uh, here in this house uh, well Dennis it's a funny question because this is actually my house we're cooking the food in and uh, since it's my house uh, I've been cooking a lot of times in this house uh, just just to say it's, it's really not his house he's still living at home yeah <laughs> I think the frying pan is about to be heated up quite a bit. Um, so in a couple of seconds, we'll be ready to um, fill the frying pan with our pork meat. Give it a second here. <laughs> Okay, I think we are uh, ready to proceed. And uh, the first step is frying the pork. Put the meat on it, Let's Put the meat on. And if you can get the camera over here, Miguel, let's just listen to the sound of the pork getting on there. <laughs> oh, and there it is. Oh, 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 that feels so good. Whoops. Eggy. Oh yeah, while he's uh, preparing the meat, I could say that you need to get like 500 to 700 uh, kilograms for this dish for like four persons. You can add more if you want to, uh, but it's already a lot of meat to put in. So, and just look at how good it's fried. And the smell of that is just great. And that, my friend, is the way the meat fries. And that is how the cookie crumbles. <laughs> this is the onion execution <laughs> device. <laughs> <laughs> well, the meat is about to be fried and we need to put some onions and garlic in there. You know, you know guys? So, all here is going to chop up some onions with a big knife! Yeah. How much onion would you cut? Onion! <laughs> oh no! We need like... <laughs> How much? Only like one onion, but it adds uh, a good flavor to, to, the, to the stew if you put like just a little onion also in there. And uh, we like onion, right? Yeah! We like big onions! <laughs> <laughs> Two onions. Yeah. No mama. Okay, Michael. If you look over here in the frying, at the frying pan, you'll be able to see that the meat is getting quite brown by now. Um, it's uh, supposed to be like that. Um, there's nothing wrong, actually. But um, the meat is about to be prepared for cooking it uh, further on. With the garlics and onions and the cream and so on. The meat is almost ready. It's great. It's a part of the... We found out the plan B and we found a metal... Metal stand. Metal stand. And the fruit and the garlic smash a pressure hammer. Yeah. And the garlic and onions is down the dish. Booyah! Like two and a half. Uh, I think this gets you cool. Like, is it half a liter? Is it a half a liter? Yeah, it's a half a liter. We need like like 25% of a liter ketchup. So A quarter. Yeah, a quarter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We also need the ketchup in it. 
We also gonna put some yeah, like water ketchup. in here. Some butter? And yeah, some butter. No, some water just to get the rest of the ketchup out. Take some out. Uh, all the ingredients are almost in there. We need salt and pepper and the curry and the paprika is, is already in there. So we're gonna put add some little salt salt here. Mm. And some pepper, man. Go nuts! Go nuts! So this is a form uh, uh, of cream. cream. It's pisca pisca fruit. Pisca fruit. Pisca fruit. Pisca 38% of pure fat. Mm. One third of a liter of milk in it, so that's kind of the last ingredients. I know. It's just have to to cook for yeah several minutes until it gets uh, thick and gets ready. And uh, we are gonna eat all that with uh, some bread. You can do it with uh, yeah light light bread, white bread in in like some kind of food. Food? Food? Yeah, Baguette. whatever. Bread. Yeah. So. Or rice or something. Alright. Viking stew is a uh, fist with um, some white bread. We've got some baguettes right here. And now we're going to put them in the oven. You're damn right we are. <laughs> <laughs> we are preparing the Viking stew with, yeah, I guess, a lot of beers. And uh, chips mm. and sodas mm. and <laughs> good so salsas so apparently, <laughs> but actually, yeah, beer beers will work out just great. Some kind of light beer because this cannibal this <laughs> yeah cannab cannibal always great with salsa. <laughs> yeah, yeah, cannibal <laughs> carbs nice. is good with salsa. Just eat it raw. Eat it raw, me get. <laughs> And with fire! This is the final result. <laughs> with cola. It's very hot. Viking stew. Ooh, and a cola. Served with bread. But it's like my bread. That's right. <laughs> it's more than that. Well, that was a really good meal. We, we could uh, make another one and eat all that again, but it's it's a really good dish. Try it out and uh, you won't be disappointed. So see you out there. Corns up and bread up. <laughs>